Wondering how to play beautiful arpeggios on the piano? These five secrets to correct arpeggio technique will help you play smooth, quick arpeggios without finger slips or tension. I'll explain what an arpeggio is to get started, and then I'll show you five key points that will improve your flexibility, accuracy, and speed when you play arpeggios. Let's get started! What is an arpeggio? It's a broken chord that flows up and down the keyboard like this. lovely chords are used in every genre of music and can be found in both melodies and harmonies. That's why learning to play arpeggios smoothly and confidently will help your piano playing sound so much better. The most common arpeggios you'll be practicing are the 12 major and 12 minor triads, but you can play any chord as an arpeggio too. Playing the dominant 7th and diminished 7th chords as arpeggios is an especially great way to gain extra flexibility between your fingers. The first secret to playing arpeggios with the correct technique is using the right fingering. This is really important because using the wrong fingering can break the flow of the arpeggio or even make you run out of fingers, which you definitely don't want to happen. To learn the correct fingering for each arpeggio, I'd recommend picking up a good scale book as they'll have all the arpeggios written out with the fingering for each note. But did you know that there's a neat way to help you memorize the arpeggios you're learning with the correct fingering? You can do this by looking at the arpeggio shape, which is the pattern of black and white notes in the chord. For example, the C major triad is made from three white notes like this, C, E, and G. This pattern would be white, 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 C, E, G. There are quite a few keys that use this white, white, white pattern, both in major and minor. All keys using this white, white, white pattern have the same fingering, which would be one, two, three, one, two, three, five in the right hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, five. The left hand fingering would be five, three, two, one, three, two, one. Other more common arpeggio shapes are white, black, white, which shares the same fingering as the white, white, white pattern. For example, the D major triad is white, black, white. There's also black, white, black, like the key of A flat major. black white black key pattern we can start on finger two actually with both hands instead of finger one of course we also have the pattern of black 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 which can be the key of g flat major or e flat minor this pattern also shares the same fingering as our white 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 pattern possible arpeggio patterns that are only found starting on B natural or B flat. So the first one of those is white, black, black, which is the key of B major. And then we've got the pattern black, white, white, which is the key of B flat major. And now we've got black, black, white, which would be the key of B flat minor. And then we've got white, white, black, which would be the key of B minor. So if you're new to practicing scales and arpeggios, I recommend focusing on your other patterns first, since more key signatures share those patterns. Has this helped you understand arpeggios a little better? If so, please hit that like button to help this video spread to other pianists like you. The secret secret to awesome arpeggios depends on how you answer this question. Should you tuck your thumb or not tuck your thumb? The reason this question is important is because it changes how we play the arpeggio. If you want to play an arpeggio across two or more octaves, you've got to reset your hand to free you up to play the notes in the second octave. Now we've got two options. The first one is the thumb under technique, which is by far the most popular one. This means you'll need to tuck your thumb under your hand to reach for the next note. It looks like that. The second option is the thumb over technique, which is less common. It means you'll pick up your hand and move it to the next position. Whether you choose the thumb under or thumb over technique depends on what works best for you. If you have normal to large hands, tucking the thumb is the preferred technique, as it naturally has a smoother sound and simply feels better under your fingers. 
However, for those who have small hands, the thumb over technique can be a real game changer, as it eliminates the tension and awkwardness that the thumb under method can cause. The main objection most people have with the thumb over technique is that it causes a slight break in the sound when you pick up the hand and move to the next position. Listen closely. However, this break does become a little less noticeable at faster tempos. And when you play arpeggios in a piece instead of just on their own, this break may even be less apparent. I would recommend experimenting with both of these techniques and choose the one that feels best for you. You should be able to play arpeggios smoothly and comfortably no matter which technique you choose. If you choose the thumb under technique like most pianists, you'll want to watch out for the chicken wing effect. Let me show you what I mean. Did you see how my elbow went up and down every time I tucked my thumb? This motion can look like you're flapping your wings. To avoid this problem, keep your elbow hanging comfortably from your shoulder and try to keep your elbow close to your side as you play your arpeggio. Your elbow should only make a very slight motion to the side as your arm follows your hand up or down the keyboard. This is because most of the thumb tucking action comes from your wrist and forearm, actually not from your elbow. If you try playing an arpeggio with your elbow right by your side, you might find it gets harder to tuck your thumb. But before you switch over to the thumb over technique, try this. Shift your wrist up and into the keyboard just slightly and rotate your forearm inward a little. This allows your thumb to easily reach the next note and then just rotate your forearm to lower your fingers onto the remaining notes. Be sure to try this motion with the left hand too. It looks a little different, but it's the same concept. If you're crossing your third finger over, bring your wrist up and into the keyboard just a little and rotate your forearm inward slightly until your third finger can reach the next note. To really help this click, you're going to want to practice just this rotation motion over and over again, hands separately. Start slowly at first and really take note of how your wrist and forearm feel as you make the transition to the next octave. Don't forget to keep an eye on your elbows so they don't flap up and down. Before long, this wrist and forearm movement will become second nature. Now that you've mastered thumb tucks and finger crossings, you can play multiple octave arpeggios a lot easier and hopefully without chicken wings. Even with all these tips that I've shared, you still might find it awkward to play arpeggios at the extreme low and extreme high ends of the keyboard. Playing really low or really high on the piano means we have to bend our wrists like this, right? Actually, no. There's a way around it. Take a moment to sit straight and tall, right in front of middle C on your keyboard. Your feet should be planted flat on the floor, and your body weight should feel centered between your two hip bones. This position is perfect for most of our piano playing, which takes place in the center of the piano. But what if we want to play down low? Simply shift your weight over your left hip bone and lean your upper body to the side. Now, try to keep your forearms lined up with your hands. Notice how much more comfortable this is? We don't have to play with broken wrists anymore. As you play an arpeggio up the keyboard, gradually shift your weight back to the middle position. And then as you get higher, slowly shift your weight over your right hip bone. Now, of course, you'll reverse this when you come back down. This side to side transfer of weight is a fantastic skill to have no matter what level of piano you're in. It will help you keep the correct body alignment and hand posture so you can play arpeggios with ease anywhere on the piano. I hope these secrets have transformed your understanding of arpeggios so you can play them without tension or stumbles. Before you go, please hit that subscribe button and stick around to see the other great videos that will pop up on your screen. Happy piano playing!